there's a lot of opinions and a lot of curiosities. There's a ton of fear. Yes. Um, there's a smaller group of optimism and, and looking to go on the offense. Here's what I can promise you. One, it's not gonna go away. So if you're gonna put your head in the sand and hope it goes away, it's, it's not. It, AI is gonna be a humongous implication as a technology for everyone in this room. I think number two, like most technologies that are big, it's gonna save us a lot of time. Yes. There's a lot of things that a lot of people do here today, spend a lot of money on today, on humans or infrastructure, hardware or software, that AI implications are going to make dramatically more efficient. Mm -hmm. There's also a lot of creative ways to work with it. So for me, I spend most of my time thinking about human behavior, pop trends, why people are wearing their hair the way they are, or why they wear hats or sneakers, all yeah. that stuff. I now am using AI as a thinking partner. I'm literally asking a bunch of AI tools questions like, why is long hair coming in? Why are caps back? versus not, yeah. you know, why are people consuming this beverage? And so I think for the creative class, they, they default into thinking AI is gonna take away my job instead of realizing AI is about to become your thinking partner. Yeah. You're gonna have curiosity. The same way that many people here use a search engine to expand on something they're thinking through, that is child's play compared to what AI bots are gonna be able to do and AI machine learning infrastructures are gonna be able to do. So I think for the creative class, for this industry, things are gonna be produced quicker mm -hmm. because of the speed and, and I think people are gonna come up with bigger and more exciting ideas yeah. because the technology is gonna guide them in the same way that a search engine was better than going to the library and looking it up on the encyclopedia. It made it faster, it made it quicker, it made it more dynamic. I think those are two things that are gonna be very clear in this industry. I think it's very easy to default into fear. Mm -hmm. I think it's actually the biggest issue in the world. Yeah. I think fear is weaponized. I think fear is at scale. Or it could be a cool and, movie too. Yes, for sure. And I'm very <laughs> empathetic to it. And I think deep fake will be enormously a big issue in the world, I fully agree with that. But I also know, back to my earlier point, this is where technologies like the blockchain are better than technologies like the internet. With the blockchain, when I upload my videos about me on the blockchain, it's gonna be very verifiable that it was me. What, I think it's one big game of cat and mouse, mm. right? To Michael's point, there's gonna be the bad guys and there's yeah. gonna be the good guys and there's always those technology advances. So to Michael's point, today, the videos that I see on in the world, I believe them. Yes. In a decade, I will have to do another thing to make sure they're real mm. because of this new technology. But again, We've always invented things that could be abused or not abused. The internet is used for good, the internet is used yeah. for bad. Right. Credit cards are used for good. And so right, right, right. I, I just think that we, we, there's an opportunity mm -hmm. to not spend all of our time dwelling on what is gonna go wrong. Mm -hmm. And I think it's important for people that have practical optimism to look at these tools and figure out what's going to go well. Yeah. So, Gary's a very common uh, source of this panel right now. <laughs> <laughs> so you think there should be less focus on the, the kind of negative and worrying about AI taking over creative roles and copying the likeness of celebrities and deep fakes. The tractor everything. was invented and took, do, does everybody understand that 80% of the world used to work on farms around the world? And the tractor was invented and people said this is gonna take away jobs. It created yeah. jobs. It allowed us to leave the farms and do other things. I, I think we demonize technology when technology has been the one currency that has advanced society for over 200 years. So yes, I think there should be less worried that it's gonna take my job because if, it's, if AI is gonna take your job, you were a commodity to begin with. You can evolve. Yeah. Right, you, for 10 years I've been hearing from people like self-driving cars are gonna take away drivers. I'm like, great, they've had 20 years to think about this, they can do other things. Yeah. Humans are powerful. We need to start, under, we have, need to stop underestimating human beings. I was born in the Soviet Union, I came to the United States when I was three and I grew up in the 80s where an enormous amount of intellectual property was created on television and through toys, so Transformers and Care Bears and My Little Pony and Strawberry Shortcake and G.I. Joe. And so I've been very affected by pop culture my whole life and um, 
14 years ago I started a marketing company, VaynerMedia, but really what it was actually looking to do was build a global uh, communications framework that would allow me to accelerate extracting attention to whatever I wanted to do. My main point was in the back half of that mission was to really create a new form of private equity. When I think about private equity, um, those organizations are very good at buying businesses in a smart way and cutting costs and running a more efficient business. What I was always fascinated by and have done in my entire career is created hyper growth. So I wanted to create a platform, an operating system to create hyper growth. My plan was to buy an established historic intellectual property that I grew up with. Casper the Friendly Ghost, Gumby, Scooby-Doo. Wherever my professional career took me and my financial capabilities, I was gonna go and buy one. Mm -hmm. When I started seeing what was happening in Web3, it became very obvious to me that similar to after-school television or video games like with Mario and Zelda or other formats like books, we've seen in history that this was a platform to create intellectual property. So vFriends in its simplest form is, in my view, a a basis of almost 300 characters that kind of takes the essence of Sesame Street and Pokemon and brings them together. So a very high focus on being competitive uh, like Pokemon, but a very strong message of civility and kindness, empathy that comes from Jim Henson's world. So I launched that a couple years ago and I'm pretty excited about it. I mean, it's very early. I'm only two years into the journey, but it's, um, it's something I planned on building in a very significant way. Where NFT sits right now for most people in this audience and around the world is where the internet sat in 2000. If you remember, in 2000, all the internet companies were wildly overvalued in public markets because the hype of the internet engulfed us. Pets.com was worth $8 billion with no (laughs) revenue. Obviously all those projects failed and a lot of people wrote many articles in 2000 is the internet a fad, the web's a fad, from Hollywood to Wall Street. But the technology was too big. Mm -hmm. The same thing's happening right now in NFTs. The last two years there was way too much greed, way too much not realness, Mm -hmm. and what happened was the brand itself is being recorrected right now and being reset. But anybody here that is not paying attention very deeply to what's happening with blockchain blockchain technology, especially if you're in the gaming space, is making a humongous mistake of opportunity. Mm -hmm. And I think over the next decade, when you think about what ownership means, think about all the games here that make remarkable revenue on the digital assets being sold in a closed ecosystem. It's a closed ecosystem. When you start understanding the dynamics of how that plays in an open ecosystem like the blockchain and how that's transferable and what that means to the gamers and what they are able to amass within games, you're trading your FIFA points for a Call of Duty point. Think about the kid that goes from Mindshare and Roblox to FIFA to Call of Duty and you're able to own those digital assets. I'm, I'm positive that Next World 2030 is talking about blockchains and NFTs about 50 to 70% of the panels. Today, because of the greed of the last year or two in NFT land, everyone's putting it on the side. Much like internet 2001, two, three, four, five, that was the time to actually build. And I think the one to 2% in this audience that are thoughtful and understand their history of technology and understand pattern recognition will dive deeper into Web3 and I think it's an inevitable outcome.